You know what's crazy is um, on this bell housing and this motor mount, there's marks right here. And I had them right here. And that's from the wire loom that wore through the steel from being strapped against the motor all those years. Hi, I'm Chris. And I'm an artist. This is my 1988 Silver Eagle Model 15 bus. Four years ago, the motor decided to let go on me, and I've been picking away at it ever since. Here at my shop, you never know what jobs, projects, or shenanigans I'll be up to. So follow along with me as I try to get this bus back on the road and get into future projects. This is 11th hour custom. I don't like, man, I really don't like sitting on the side of this motor. Well, that's a good sign. The oil pan started to fall down. I don't like normally doing it with a screwdriver, but I'm not going to use this oil pan again. Gaskets on here. There's still a bolt on that side. Okay. At least these bearings, don't like the one in the um, other motor, they were all melted out. Of, I mean, the uh, crank if mains were blue. Hi. I just wanted to show one of the main bearings and the main cap. This was a main cap from the um, the motor that uh, literally, as you look at it, it melted down. So this, what you're looking at right here, is the bearing. That's the bearing material that the crankshaft literally was pushing, melting down. And as it melted, it was going over the edges of the main cap. So the main caps are like blue, like black blue. So here's one of the actual bearings. So that's the bearing as it melted down. Same thing, it was another main cap. And just the weight of gravity and the force was literally melting the material over the edges. All right, before I move on, couple bags, label those oil pan bolts and the um, sump bolts. I got so many bolts and cans, I don't want to mix everything up. So. Hi, hi. What are you doing? You say hi? I see you. Come here. I don't want to pet you with my oily gloves. And you don't want to be pet. Yeah, I know. You just want to be a pain in the ass. So this is uh, how I've been doing this. Every piece that has its own bolts. Even now, I have all the ones from the old motor on this one, too. I'm just going to bag them and label them. So that's the sun. Yeah. So I'm going to pull one of those caps, probably the end one because it's almost straight down. This is what makes me nervous. Just doing this on the stand. If this thing fell over on this side, at least the other motor's here to save me. Hopefully if it falls, it'll probably still kill me. I got, if I can get the motor mounts on, I could sit out further. I'd feel a little more comfortable being underneath of it. Here. I've been waiting to do this for a while. Ugh! Damn. I don't like pulling on this motor. 
Let me get the impact gun. No, oh, that's gotta work. I forgot to turn the freaking air on. What the hell? There we go. Let's try that. This one started over here. That's a good budget. And all I want to do is get one of these off. do much until uh, I get this motor supported the way I want it. Okay. So that's a rod bearing and uh, honestly it looks pretty good. It looks like brand new. Crankshaft looks like brand new. I'll put this cap back on. So it's not laying on the floor. <coughs> and I gotta put the sump on. That goes there. Before I do the sump, I'm gonna scrape these uh, gaskets off. And also, too, if you can see here, there's uh, the bell housing gasket. <coughs> Looks like there's someone put a Healy coil in here. That's not good either. That's gotta be fixed. So we'll grind that off because it. It's going to interfere with the gasket of the oil pan. And we'll clean this off because the gasket goes around. Uh, okay, now that I got the big chunks off, um, I'm going to. Uh, take a razor blade and try to clean the small, smaller chunks off. Um, the only reason I'm doing this is I normally would use a scotch brake on this, which I'm gonna use, but I wanna limit the amount of uh, dust I get near the crank and all. And then I'll blow it off with air and clean it. But I just wanna get it nice and clean without having to grind down major chunks of gasket. So I'm gonna do as much as I can with the razor knife. I'm gonna see if I can cut these gaskets here. With this. Okay. One thing I learned from doing this kind of stuff and doing painting is I always, always use a new razor blade. Don't punish yourself with a dull one. Yo. Yo. Who's it, Gabe? Gabe. Nice. Is that you to beep? Huh? Oh, yeah, that was me. Yeah. Were you beeping Sorry, at me? Scared. I didn't want to just bust in on me. That's all right. In case I was naked? Yeah. Oh, I was hoping that. I was hoping you were gonna get naked since I honked. Yeah, well that's what Pete always says, that's why. <laughs> He's like Pete and Jason are always like, yeah, we always whenever we walk in we're like, yo, yeah, you in here? <laughs> Just in case you're naked. <laughs> I said, well that's not usually my first intentions when I get in here is to take my clothes off, but Just sometimes. You never know. I wanna show this sump from the uh, original motor that blew up. So, I had parts wash this, you know, when I pulled it out of the old motor, and um, and I parts washed it yesterday. I took the screen off just now, and all that right there what? was laying in the top of the screen. This is the top of the screen, and you can see, like, that's pieces of bearing. What? Stuff and like that, and that's all bearing material. So thank God I took it apart. I don't know what the hell I was thinking. Man, imagine that getting sucked up into the motor and destroy it quickly. <gasps> so I'm gonna wash this one more time and get that off of there. I just so happened to be using the uh, the air gun to blow out dust 
from the tube because it's been sitting around the shop so long and I saw a piece of like uh, Babbitt or whatever you would call the bearing material um, fly out and I was like whoa wait a minute and I started looking and I'm like no I'm just gonna unbolt this so thank god I did I really didn't want to do a whole segment on um, this sump but uh, I just want to kind of show what's going on here uh, that stuff was like really in there and under some of this pressed in parts and these are like spot welded in there but there's a little bit of a lip and I could see uh, pieces of metal in here so I'm gonna go get a pick and see if you could see what I'm talking about so right here is a piece that's metal like you know like almost like copper uh, so I just want to get these pieces that are like stuck in the grid in the uh, holes here and get them out I'm not saying that every little piece is going to be out but clearly I'm going to have to change oil uh, probably right after I get it started the filter picks up most of what's left some of it looks like gasket material but it may be you know just burnt metal there was a piece I could see stuck in the, in the holes here. Here's one here. That's all the hair. And right along this fold, there's a piece here. There's another piece. Right here, it's a little filing. So I know, be cautious of using parts from this motor that blew up. So I'm going to take the blow gun and really blow out this fold here. Man, here's a big piece right here. Just flicked off. Yeah, look. Do you see that? I mean, some of them are so thin, they're probably thinner than tinfoil or like silver leaf. So I guess the best I can do is just cl clean this as thoroughly as I can and hope for the best. It doesn't really look like there's anything inside. Now this piece here, there was a couple pieces, like there was literally chunks of metal. This has a gasket on it, but... It's amazing where all those little pieces get to. I don't think this is an exact science, but I'm gonna mark this. Hello. It's a beautiful day. <clears throat> My list for today of things to do is gonna put the sump together, uh, make the gasket, and uh, um, install the sump install the oil pan and then start sorting out the oil cooler and trans cooler which is a huge feat for me that's it and i'm going to show you how nice it is outside but before that um i came out this morning and this was on the doorstep which was uh the gasket i ruined where that metal ring goes and i called us coach yesterday and uh ordered this gasket and um and sure enough, man, it was on the front doorstep this morning. So, yeah, talk about, talk about fast. Like, so I really wasn't expecting that. I was expecting it to be like another day or so. Even though U.S. coaches in, were in the same state, and they're literally an hour away from me. Um, got it quick. So thank you, Luke. Just make sure this is the right one. I'm sure it is. I said it was my fault. Got screwed up. And that's it. So cool. So that's awesome, man. That's I can get rolling on that too and get that gasket material cleaned off. Let me show you how nice it is outside. All right, kitties. Doors open. It feels like it's about 60 inside. It feels like it's almost 60 outside. Right, Pa? Psst. Psst, psst, psst. 
Hey, where are you going? What is that? Bugs are waking up, thawing out. All right. Okay. There's the sump. So this will give us the outside, even though the original one didn't look like this. And then this, this will give us the inside. And that's it. So I'm just gonna cut it out. And oh, let me get a couple hole punches. Piece of wood. So I don't have anything that size. Okay, that's close. So we'll do these oval ones. Actually, you know what, that's pretty close. Alrighty, let me get a, uh, a knife. Why wait? Okay. And here's the opposite side. I'm barely pushing on it. Okie dokie, that's it. What is the front? What's going on? I'm making a gasket for the sump. So just when you think that um, you're not learning anything and you're spinning wheels. I was going through my gaskets this is for the Detroit Park, so I keep all this in here, and uh, when I need something, I go to this box, but uh, I came across this gasket looking for the sump gasket. As soon as I looked at it, I'm like, that's not for the sump. I mean, it looks similar, but it's not. And this is my guess, but just knowing from seeing the parts over and over is the air intake for the compressor. That would be my guess, and this is the sump. And it does say oil pickup tube, so this is the one we need to put the sump on. So this sump's together. I'm just going to snug it up. And then I'm going to put it underneath the motor. Make sure uh, this lines up with the brace on the block. We'll go see what that looks like. Might as well, I guess we'll just go do it. The hell with it. And then I'll tighten everything up. I should have vacuumed. I meant the vacuum, and I didn't. So I would think that's right. They bolt there, and then this thing's got to go forward. That's why we left it loose. I don't yeah. know what you're looking at, baby Yoda. Okay, that'll work. Okay, for my next trick, we're gonna tighten up that sump right there. Put some sealant on there, put the oil pan gasket on, and try to get that done. But... So I'm gonna lock tight these bolts. <coughs> for the sump, <coughs> one by one. And then re-tighten them. How much lock I got here?
good nothing sprung. So nothing's on pressure. Now watch that thing sharp as hell. Cleaned up this oil pan with um, lacquer thinner. And I wiped everything down as, as clean as I could. So what I'm gonna do is um, put a little bead at this ceiling on here. And I'm not gonna go bananas, but enough to hold it in place. Try to limit my, the amount of fingers I use because then I really get it everywhere. It's a nice monumental moment for me. God, over three years since I took this off. So this thing has a particular way to go on. There's the bolt holes back here are closer together than the ones in the front. Nice. Alrighty. <coughs> that set up a little bit. Okay, let's get this pan. I got all the bolts cleaned up and as clean as I can. These are the bolts off the Silver Series. This motor. I think the other one just had regular radiant bolts. <sighs> So what happened down here was um, I had a strip bolt in the back of the pan where the bell housing is. And that's the bell housing from the old motor, which of course I guess somebody stripped out at some point in its life. And uh, one had a Healy coil in it, which was the other side. And this side had, it looked, I remember looking at it, it looked fine. So I chased it with a, with a 3 8 tap and it threaded in. So someone put a 3 8 bolt in that one hole. So I'm just putting it back. It was, it, I put it in there and it tightened up. So that's all that matters. So I just went and got a lock washer and a washer. So I'm gonna leave it like that. I wanna make sure it's tight, tight. So that's, that's that. So now we could start to lay out the cooler. So in conclusion of this video, I never pulled a main cap off. Everything looked okay. The crankshaft looked new. The rod cap, uh, even though it's not the side that gets the damage, um, looked like brand new. So I figured I'd roll the dice. So next will be the oil cooler, which is like a mystery in itself if you've never done one. If you've done them and after you do it, it doesn't seem like a big deal. Although I shouldn't say that until this is running and there's not coolant in the oil. So <laughs> hopefully I got the, uh, the order right. So sure. Yeah. So don't forget to subscribe for Polly's sake. Thanks. It was a kiss. A Mother's Day kiss. Alrighty.
大事やんでございます。